In January 91, the Iraqis began launching Scud missiles on Israel. If Israel had retaliated, it would have been politically impossible for the coalition Arab forces to remain in the war. The Western alliance against Iraq would have disintegrated. The SAS were tasked to go deep behind enemy lines, locate the Scuds and take them out. Failure might have given victory to Saddam Hussein. They would cross the border in strength, fully armed, fully tooled up, maximum ammunition. They would then search until they located a mobile Scud position. They would drive in, guns blazing, destroy it, drive off into the night. This film is about two successful missions deep behind enemy lines. Young Trooper Matt's story. The first mission is about the first shot fired in anger on the ground in the Gulf War. The first kill. White-eyed, up close. Initially, they talked about us doing some form of hostage release because of all the uh, hostages that had been taken in Kuwait and then moved up towards Baghdad. And then taskings changed throughout as the theatre actually built up. They started looking at us going into Western Iraq, deep behind enemy lines, and doing some form of search and destroy. Basically, as a disruption force to draw the attention away from Kuwait. There was very limited information on the enemy that was going to bump into, even though they said that it could be substantial. We just went out there basically and just see who we'd come across. We knew that we were better than anybody that we were going to come across. So I think uh, that's where our uh, professionalism then clicked in. It was a, a mixture of terrains. I don't think, I can't ever remember coming across any sort of desert environment like sand, like you saw on the uh, people saw on the TVs. It was very, very rugged terrain. We'd been driving all night at that stage. We'd been across the border in the region of about four to five days. We'd been in, in as layup point as LUP for most of the day. And what we tried to do is get into dead ground, into a depression in the ground if we could, um, to keep concealed especially at a great distance. We put sentries out upon the high ground, which could then identify anything coming towards us, and cammed the vehicles up, put big cabinets over the vehicles, and basically just got on with administration, cleaning weapons, sorting yourselves out, getting some food down here, uh, and then get, uh, eventually getting some sleep. The weather was, in everybody's opinion, horrific. You know, the guys that have been to Norway said that they'd never ever been so cold. We didn't have the equipment and the clothing to, to keep us warm. I start to have a, a, a lot of uh, cold uh, injuries to my fingers um, because the gloves that we, we, we had weren't uh, good enough. They were only uh, very thin leather gloves uh, and y your hands became very, very hard and very cold. As the time progressed, my finger, the skin around my fingernails start to crack um, on, on all my fingers and, and both thumbs, uh, which caused a lot of pain, um, especially as you, it got colder in the night. Um, so what we were having to do was wrap socks around, cut holes in socks and put socks over his hands. Because it was that cold, you were gritting your teeth a lot more. And I, I cracked a, 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 quite a few of my teeth at the back of my mouth um, because of just pure grit in my teeth. Clothing was initially uh, very limited. We, we was under the impression, and as intelligence had stated, that we was, um, we was it was quite warm out there. And we, most of us went out with jungle combats or desert combats at the time, um, which turned out to be quite poor. Um, and as normal SAS smocks, which are slightly wind resistant, 
but in the temperatures that we're going to come across, uh, they weren't that good. At about three o'clock that afternoon, one of the sentries that was on high ground pointed across to uh, down the, the wadi. There was a vehicle coming towards us, a small jeep type vehicle. And all of a sudden it just drove straight towards us and we didn't know what the hell it was. We obviously knew it was Iraqi. Um, so, you know, you can only take it that it, it's obviously enemy. the immediate shock that Jesus is a, there's a vehicle coming towards us um, it, it did cause a bit of a, an initial flap once we identified who they were some fuck is coming drove up right up towards our vehicle and stopped within about 30 metres of it. The driver got out, the commander got out and two guys stayed in the back and we was all under the cam net getting ready to let these guys have it and uh, as he came towards us I thought, Jesus, I'm gonna kill this bloke and, um, you know, the first kill. And uh, as he came towards us, one of our guys walked out with his weapon behind his back. Our lad lifted his weapon up. At that point, he had a stoppage, but at the exact same point, I dropped the guy. This all happened in an instance, but it seemed to take a great deal of time. Keep him down! Bastard's been hit! Shmag him now! Shmag him! At the same time, and I'm talking of literally over seconds, I got up with another guy and started moving towards the vehicle. As we got there, one lad was pulling the body out of the back and there was a big jet of blood just spurted out, which stuck him in mind, you know, because that's the, the graphic detail of it. Shmag him up. Get him over to the vehicle, quick as you can. This one looks fucking Move dead. Move it! Fucking get him back down! Go! Get him back! Okay, get back and check the vehicle. Check the guy, get ready now. The guy died very, very quickly. The other Iraqi was massively traumatised. He, he was in great shock because all of a sudden he had—he was on a normal reconnaissance for the, for the area. And um, next thing he knows, everybody that's with him has uh, been killed. They were the uh, reconnaissance group, the command group for a very large artillery division. And the information that they had on them gave the allies a massive amount of information of what was going on. Here. 